Hello, welcome to another edition of the Coach's Corner. Where every week, uh, Coach Serrano and myself uh, get to speak to college coaches from around the country, talk a little bit about baseball as a whole, both at the youth level and obviously the high school and college level. Today, I am joined by a very recognizable name in Greater New England. Uh, last name Glavin, everybody perks up. Uh, they know the pitcher at the major league level, but they don't know the major league hitter. And we're going to find out a little bit about him today. Coach Mike Glavin, head coach at Northeastern University. Mike, thank you for taking some time to join us today. What's happening, Walter? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, finally tracked you down. I took my wife. I think she cornered you in an airport and said, hey, when are you going to get on that thing? He's uh, he's looking for a little love from Northeastern. I know. I'm, I can be hard to get a hold of. I think it's kind of I'm a little bit of an introvert, believe it or not, as a head coach, probably not a great combination. And I try to I try to stay out of the, I don't know, it's a spotlight, but let the guys and the team do the talking. But I'm, I'm excited to talk some baseball with you today. Well, one might think that was being big leagued, but I know you better than yeah. that. So at least we got you today. So that's all that matters. Yeah. So Don't take it personally. <laughs> so one of the things I want to really uh, get across to, to those of you that are watching, we could make a great argument that the best Division One baseball program in New England, at least, we'll start there, uh, would be Northeastern University. And if I would have said that five or 10 years ago, people would have laughed. But after all of these years, we're well past a decade now where Mike Glavin, first of all, played at Northeastern University under the legendary Neil McPhee uh, and was a professional hitter uh, and drafted out of Northeastern and eventually became a big leaguer uh, and joined his famous brother, Tom, on the New York Mets Um I know you got a knock against a Marlins guy, right? Was it a Marlins guy? I got a base hit last at bat against Braden Looper the year the Marlins won the World Series. Now, now you can hang your hat when somebody says they have a big league knock uh, a hit in the big leagues. That's it. That's a mic drop. So congratulations on that. Uh, but Mike, I want to talk about Northeastern and the development under your tutelage and your staff. It is now the desired destination for not only those uh, of us in the frozen tundra of New England, but all across the country. Tell us a little bit about Northeastern baseball. Yeah, and I know I, I appreciate all of those kind words. First of all, I know I was a career minor leaguer. I don't have any ill-conceived notions about that. But I, I, you, I, did you play in the big leagues? I did play in the big leagues. Do you have a hit in the big leagues? I have one. You are a big leaguer. So all you right, played well, minor league ball, but you are a big leaguer. I appreciate that. And, <laughs> and, you know, as far as, it, you know, the kind words about our program, I know I know there's some of our neighbors around here that would say they're the, they're certainly a, the premier team in New England. But I think we're in the conversation now. And and I think that was a goal that I had to, when I first took over as the head coach from Coach McPhee, as you mentioned, who's in the Hall of Fame here at Northeastern, 29 years as the head coach here. And really him and Tinker Conley just – uh, built this program to, to what it is today. And all I tried to do is add on to what they had already started. So um, that was a, certainly a goal when I first took over, you know, 10 years ago is how can we take the program to a, a, another level on top of what, what Tinker and Neil coach McPhee had done. And so um, that's, that's been our driving force, you know, and looking at our program, trying to find our strengths, try to identify our weaknesses and how can we use those to our advantage and to continue to grow the program? The university itself, I will say this, Walter, starting there is the university itself has really gone to another level from a global experience, from an academic experience. Our campus has changed tremendously since I was here as a student athlete. You know, when I was here, it was a, more of a commuter school. And, and, um, and now the academic piece, I would never get into the school now. It's so challenging academically. And there's so many students that live on campus now. It's a community. And I think it all started there with the vision of the university. And then we were just trying to match that vision. You know, uh, it's funny. You mentioned commuter school. Back in the day, Northeastern was called one of those safety net schools. Now it's literally a top 30 uh, university. And I know the global fr footprint encompasses over 110 countries. All 50 states are represented within the uh, student body. But I want to talk about Northeastern now has become almost like pitching you, pitching university. You know, Penn State has linebacker you, Northeastern now, and you talk to scouts and 
we all know the same. You and I know the same people. But every time I'm talking to a scout, they're talking about the arms or the arm farm at Northeastern. Is that something that you focused your attention on as a coach when you took over that program? Absolutely. I think, I, you know, as much as the game has evolved and as much as it cha- has changed and there's been so much, so much, you know, great information, analytics, data and everything that's that the, how the game has grown. To me, pitching is where it all starts still. And so that was definitely a goal of ours. Is to, we've had great pitching before I got here as the head coach and again, continue that tradition. So identify the best pitchers that we can. I feel and believe that there are a lot of talented pitchers in the Northeast and um, you have the ability to be in the conversation with those players, those pitchers when you're recruiting them. And, and, and so I think there's enough there for us to be successful. You try to identify the talent. And then certainly I have to give a tremendous amount of, of credit to Coach Cobb, our pitching coach who's been with me from the start who's done an incredible job with our pitchers. Um, We've done it different ways. If you look at our, even our last two years, we talk a lot about this with our current pitching staff. Now, you know, two years ago, we had three draft picks and Sebastian Keen, Cam Schlittler, Thomas Balboni. We had a, a, one of the better average fastball velocities in the country. We had a really talented pitching staff had a lot of strikeouts. Well, last year we got bit a little bit by the draft. We lose those three guys. We had a couple of injuries. And we had to do it a different way. We did it with strikes. And we were one of the best pitching staffs in the country last year with command, uh, low whip, low ERA, um, good strikeout to walk ratio. And I just think Coach Cobb has been able to take what we've had each year and done an outstanding job at pitching to our strengths um, and and utilizing our talents on the mound. So I I do think we've been blessed to have a lot of great pitchers. I I think we have a really strong pitching staff again this year. And I don't see us changing any time in the future. We want to continue to be, you know, really tough on the mound. So the other dynamic here is, as you alluded to, you also have a couple of big leaguers that are, you know, Northeastern uh, grads uh, that are current big leaguers. Uh, where's Savali now? He was with Savali the Indians. Savali was traded to the race. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So, yep. you know, the thing is, is I want parents to understand, we talk college baseball and a lot of families get lost in these, you know, power fives and P5s and the the Coastal Athletic Association. Can we talk a little bit about the teams that year after year that you're competing against that literally are some of the best college programs in the country? So not only is your conference really good, but your out of conference schedule is equally as good. Talk a little bit about that. So student athletes and families know about those teams and programs that you're playing against. Sure. Great stop. I'll start with non-conference because I'll dive deeper into to our, our in-conference, the coastal. But um, non-conference, you know, as a coach, you get to you get to try to schedule who you who you want to play and who you can play and challenge yourself to the levels that you want to challenge yourselves. And for us, it's always been trying to play the best teams we can possibly play and then try to try to challenge our current players to get better and to get up to speed with those teams and and certainly compete with those teams, which I think we've really done these last five years, really. Um, and so you try to challenge that way. You also, for us, you get the team on the road early in the season, you build chemistry, you're traveling together. Things aren't easy. We don't get to play a home game till, you know, five weeks into the season. Right. So, so you're on the road a lot, but that builds a lot of chemistry with your team and toughness and grit. And so you challenge ourselves as best we can from a non-conference perspective and, and, and hopes of giving yourselves two chances to get into the conference, uh, to the, to the regionals at the end of the year, win your conference tournament or try to get an at large bid. So we try to schedule really tough outside of conference in conference. uh, You know, I'm glad you said that. I I think we have a sneaky, uh, I don't know if it's sneaky anymore, but um, really tough conference. And now you add Campbell to this mix, um, which is now it's like, okay, you have teams like Campbell. I'm going to, I don't want to miss anybody. So my fellow coaches get upset, but Wilmington, you know, it seems to always run through Wilmington. They're the defending champs. They've done an incredible job there. Coach Gaff, Coach Hood now, awesome program. Charleston, we all know about College of Charleston. Elon, William and Mary, Delaware, Towson, Hofstra, Monmouth, Stony Brook. Um, I hope, I don't know if I missed anybody. I apologize, but you get the idea, right? And just a, a really tough conference, top to bottom. Travel's involved, so there's a grind there. Um, and, and, and it's great baseball, you know, so – as you peel back the layers and you watch the landscape change, you know, power five, that term is even going to go soon. It's going right, to be, it is right. 
power three, right? Or whatever. Right. Power three, right. Exactly. Yeah. Correct. So, but now you start looking at other conferences and to, to me, like our conference right now is knocking on the door of being right outside those conferences when you really dig deep and take a look at what it's all about. Well, especially with the addition of, uh, you know, I just talking with Justin and uh, Coach Hare at Campbell. I mean, Campbell came from absolutely out of nowhere 10 years ago. And today they are a top 20 pro, perennial top 20 program. Uh, and so you start looking at UNC uh, Wilmington and Charlotte. We had we talked to Coach uh, Wooded the, uh, a few weeks ago. And this is a big time conference, which is why I was hoping you were going to join me eventually. Because what I want parents to understand is if I would have said five to 10 years ago that Northeastern University was going to get an at-large bid into the NCAA regional, people would have laughed at me. But now, not only is that probable, but it's it, it, the odds are that Northeastern is going to be in the top 45 to 60 RPI year after year because of the strength of their conference schedule, their out-of-conference schedule. And I think, Mike, you should take, and I know you take an awful lot of pride as an alum, that's a big deal at Northeastern University. Am I correct? It is a big deal. And I'll be honest with you, people laughed at me when I first took over. Like, hey, we can do it. We can get an at-large. And and I, I remember, you know, you, you you always hear that this new phrase, take receipts, but keep the receipts. But I know people are laughing at me probably early on when I said, hey, we can get an at-large. And and I know it for a fact I said, I, I want this program to be nationally ranked someday. Like, we can do that. And we were this past year, you know, to make the top 25. Is it is it the end goal? Of course not. That's not the end goal. But is it is it a part of the journey and the process and shows what you what you're capable of? Of course. And so, yeah, I think what our what our conference is doing from top to bottom and then what our program has been able to do shows you the type of baseball Again, when you do a little more research and look around and see what else is out there, are we the shiny object, Northeastern baseball? No. Are we the one that's um, going to get this, you know, can't wait to send out the Instagram post of I'm going to Northeastern or whatever? <laughs> I know where we stand on all this. Right. But when, you, when you're making a life decision and um, a mature decision of where you fit and where you can play potentially at a top 40 school academically and maybe a top 40 baseball team, the list is pretty short, and for us to be on that is pretty, is, is pretty cool. So I want to expand on that point because both Mike and I are, are Massachusetts natives, uh, Bill Ricker and Lynn, Massachusetts. And so for us, when we would talk things about Boston, it used to be back in the day, it was the Bean, Bean Pot Hockey Tournament, of which you are very familiar with. But Boston as a college city oh. uh, is such an amazing environment. If we... For those of you not familiar, you have Boston College, Boston University, uh, you have Berkeley School of Music, you have, uh, you, have uh, um, you know, a, a tremendous amount of colleges within a 10 mile radius uh, of which Northeastern is part of that vibrant college community. So for parents across the country, for student athletes, Northeastern is an elite academic institution in an elite major metropolitan city that offers student athletes a great social, cultural, academic, and athletic experience. And what I want you to discuss a little bit, Mike, because you talked about you didn't get outside for five weeks. You guys have a brand new facility. Well, for me, it's brand new uh, because I remember the old uh, days of where you guys played. Talk about the facilities that you now have both for warm weather, cold weather, but you have indoor training facilities. You have a brand new field that, that, that families can you know go and watch your student sure. athletes play. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, there's a couple of things there. And, and starting on the facilities, we have we have an awesome indoor facility, which obviously in the Northeast you need that, right? So we have we have a facility that's all turfed out. We can essentially get a full infield in. We have drop down cages. Um, we'll get live scrimmages in there. We'll you know we'll have umpires come in and we'll have scouts come in and want to see the guys work out and 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 try to make the most from a live perspective perspective as possible along with practice. The cages, like I mentioned, the weight rooms right there. So we have an all uh, encompassing building with our locker room there, our SAS and academic support in that building, athletic trainings room, all of that in in our Cabot Center here, which is which is just an amazing spot. And 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 I'm hopeful. I'm not letting. Anything, I'm not not saying it too much right now. But there's even more to come. 
And so that's really exciting to see the investment in our athletics here from Northeastern um, perspective. And, and But what we have right now. And then, as you mentioned, we have a field that is, I think, is a hidden gem. Now, we are in downtown Boston, as you mentioned. So you got to get to know Northeastern. We are walking distance to Fenway Park. We are downtown, but we have our own community. We have our own campus, but there's not enough space to house our, 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 our beautiful baseball stadium. So we're a little bit off campus. We're a couple miles off campus, two and a half, three to be exact. And our field is all turfed out, brand new turf, obviously, which we really need in the Northeast. We have some more upgrades coming to our field this, this, um, this off season here coming up soon. We have some more coming this summer. To me, it's a hidden gem right you know right off of boston right off of the city and it's a great great place to, to play college baseball and we're lucky to have all the all the facilities that we have and that we continue to 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 improve well one of the little tidbits that coach glavin just threw out there we affectionately call it fenway park yeah. but uh would you talk a little bit about the baseball version of the bean pot because to me as a prospective student athlete that would hold a tremendous significance with regard to the opportunity to be able to play in such a historic venue. Yeah. So as, as you mentioned, um, the bean pot, most people think of the bean pot from a hockey perspective around here. Um, it's an awesome hockey tournament with tr incredible tradition. North in the hockey uh, bean pot, it's Northeastern, BC, BU and Harvard. So it's a, it's a, you know, it's a four team, play round one and then a consolation game and championship in, in round two. They play it at the garden in Boston, right? Where the Bruins and Celtics play. So we have something similar where it's, it's Northeastern BC, Harvard and UMass. And we play a 14 little tournament round Robin tournament day one, and then a consolation and championship game two with the consolation and championship game. Usually every other year, Walter, it's not every right. year now, but every other year we're playing at Fenway park which is which is a pretty awesome perk. So, you know, from a Northeastern perspective, if I'm going to Northeastern, I get a chance to play at Fenway Park, but I also get a chance to play the Red Sox every spring training down at JetBlue um, in Fort Myers. We get to play them. Um, it's always their first exhibition game now. Their first game each year is against our program. And I can tell you, it's without being there, I can't tell you the smiles on our guys' faces the treat it is to be out there on JetBlue Park, to be out there because the Red Sox will have their major leaguers out there. It's not it's not just the minor leaguers. It's a combination of both. And last year was just an incredible, you know, all the starters were out there for the Red Sox, which was pretty awesome to watch them take BP and get to hang out with them for a day. So to, 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 to play our schedule, it is tough, but it also has some great perks. Well, you beat me to that punch, but I want to let parents know that game is television, uh, is, is streamed live on television on Nesson, New England Sports ne Network up here. Uh, and it is truly a great way to kick off your spring break by going down uh, to uh, Fort Myers and, and playing against the Boston Red Sox. So to me, these are the intangibles or the little things that really make a big difference. I mean, parents and student athletes are looking at programs Northeastern, regardless of where you live, which is what I want to talk to you a little bit about now, is a great opportunity. You should be giving it a great look. But, Mike, talk a little bit about recruiting from that perspective. It used to just be you'd be going after the greater New England student athlete. But now, I mean, you've had I know you've had student athletes from Louisiana and, and down south and all throughout the East Coast. But talk a little bit more now about your roster and the components of the roster. Yeah, so it, without – um, we, we can't record re recruit nationally to the extent maybe we'd like to, but we can try to. And, and so, but it still starts Walter in the backyard. Like we have to, our, our goal is to be really tough and strong in our backyard and to, to want to keep the kids locally instead of maybe going South or going somewhere else, else as best we can and be in the conversations with all the best players in new England, try to be that that's our goal. Certainly um to be in those conversations to want these guys to to stay home to play in front of their family every weekend and during the week and not have to travel too much to to go to college and be able to go home when they want a break from college and and there's so much value in being going to college close to home uh and sharing that great time of your life with your family so we really try to be the best we can in our backyard but 
you know, realistically, you have to you have to expand from that area. We had to, we have to open up our footprint a little bit. So New, New York, New Jersey, obviously, is a, is a, is certainly right in, in our, our wheelhouse and, and student athletes that we want to recruit. Pennsylvania, definitely. Canada, um, absolutely. Coach McPhee did an awesome job starting the, the, the Canadian pipeline, so to speak, to Northeastern, you know, even when I was here back in the 90, early 90s. So we try to re- re- expand that route. And then, yes, we are definitely getting more traction throughout the country from either West Coast perspective or South, you know, a little bit from people that have done their research, <clears throat> excuse me, and know what it's have an idea, I should say, what Northeastern is about from an academic and athletic and baseball perspective. So we're still predominantly in the Northeast, and I think that will always be the way, but we are definitely branching out and getting more traction and more interest from different parts of the country, which has been fun to see. Okay, last question. Uh, just parents are always asking, you know, I have a parent here that just sent me a text that knew I was, was going to be speaking with you. How do you want people to reach out to you? Do you want parents to email uh, you uh, at, at your email address? Uh, or do you like Twitter interaction? Do you want a video? Do you want a transcript? What, what would you like? as far as contact from prospective student athletes? Yeah. So a couple of things. I kind of, I might give you a long answer here. That's I'll, okay. <laughs> I do want to touch on a couple last things. Sure. One is, you know, email is still good. Um, I, I like the video. So I think a, an email from the kid, not the parents, right? Typically you want to hear from the kid. Right. Um, make sure it's personalized. I've, I've, I've seen plenty of cut and pasted emails that were, maybe addressed to a different head coach. And I can only imagine the poor, you know, the kid, I'm sure he feels bad. I get it. But, you know, personalize a little bit. If Northeastern, if you're emailing me, you're taking the time to email me, you should know a little something about us. It should be personalized. Hey, Coach Glavin, you know, I I saw you guys had a great year last year. Or I saw, you know, you had a big win, you know, did this. Something that lets me know that you've researched our program a little bit, not just, yeah, Northeastern's a school of interest to me, right? I think personalize a little bit right away. And then send us some video, potentially send us your measurables, send us your academic information and why you're maybe interested in Northeastern. Right? Short, short and sweet to the point. Summer coach contact, high school coach contact, um, schedule if it allows for at that time of year. Um, so I think I think all a short email is still good. Reaching out to the head coach, the assistant coaches are great. Um, I definitely think that, you know, our prospect, I, I, I know there's so many opportunities to go to prospect camps and clinics and tournaments. My, my disclaimer to that is if you're truly interested in Northeastern and if you researched it and you know what we're about and you have a list of schools, then yeah, and we're on it. I think it's great to go to teams, prospect days and clinics. I really think it's important. A majority of our players have come through our clinics or prospect days one at one point or another. So I think that is a great way to be seen by the coaches i know it's expensive i know it adds up you can't go to 20 of them but if you truly have a list and you've you've worked on your list and you're serious about it i think it's great to go to those those camps and clinics and and email those coaches as well i always tell our kids you you touched upon it a little bit um not only is boston an incredible place to go to college new england is amazing right now in my opinion division one two and three some of the best teams in the country are right here in New England, right? Amen. You have teams from Division One that are being nationally ranked and and going to regionals to winning conference championships. You have teams in Division Two going to their College World Series. You have teams in Division Three going to their College World Series. High academic, different academic, different campuses. There's so many great options for kids to play college baseball. It doesn't have to be Division One or bust. You have your goals, of course, but there are so many great options here in New England and, and across the country, but particularly New England because we do have that Division Two, Division Three uh, component as well. And then I last thing I would say too, Walter, which surprises me, when we do a camp or clinic, I'll ask a kid, I'll ask the group, hey, how many college baseball games have you been to? Oh, amen. I know where you're going. Yay. And you got 40 kids standing in front of you and two hands go up. And I, you know, uh, and I'm always shocked that that they can't, you know, I'm busy, I'm busy. Well, we're all busy, but it is a pretty important life decision. 
So you might want to get out and see us play and say, man, those guys stink. I want to go somewhere better. Or, oh, man, those guys are really good. I, I don't know if I can play there. Or I have this, this perception of Division Two or Division Three baseball, and then I get there and think, oh, my God, these guys are really good. I better get going. So I think it's really important to get out there and see some college games as well. Well, I want to expand on that. I, I guess I'm, I fibbed when I said it would be the last question. At your camp, I know you have a lot of coaches that help you at your at your camps. Uh, I think camps are absolutely, in today's world, they're in almost as important, if not more important, than your summer baseball. That's a story for another day. But you talked about something pertaining to Division Two and Division Three, and even JUCO in New England in the Northeast. Sure. Whether it's Shank, uh, Scotty, when he was at uh, Southern New Hampshire, Eric at, at, at Salve, uh, we could go on and on. There's a lot of great college baseball in the Northeast. And I know that when student athletes show up at your camps uh, or you go out and see somebody, you're even helping those guys. You know, this guy might not be a fit for us, but he would definitely be a fit for you and vice versa. Uh, Can you just talk to that? Expand on that a little bit, because we're New England guys. We get a bad rap with regard to baseball. Um, But really, there is great opportunity for a stu- prospective student athlete anywhere at any level in new england i would 100 percent agree i think that as new england coaches we're a pretty close group yeah we all want to we all want to beat each other we all <laughs> we all want to win the recruiting battle we all take that off the table once you can peel that back for the most part we're a pretty close group here in New England. The NEIBA, the socials, the hang, you know, we, I see some other coaches coming to our games that, you know, might have the weekend off division two, II, division three, whatever. So I think it's, we're a close group and we're always talking to each other. I'm listen, I'm there. Some of their guys might be in the transfer portal and I want to talk to them. Hey, tell me about this kid. Tell me about, and, and the same for us. And so I think the relationships within the New England coaching ranks is are close. We're a close knit group. And so, like, for, I can only speak for Northeastern, but I know other schools do the same thing. When we do run a prospect camp or, or a day, we invite everybody to come. All, all these local schools are, are welcome to come and watch our – this isn't just a Northeastern camp because then I would feel a little guilty, right? You got right. 40 kids here, and <laughs> right. there's probably going to be one or two maybe that end up in Northeastern. Let's be realistic. Right. But if I have another 5, 10, 15 coaches there – I, and they can see these other kids. These kids are showcasing their talents for us and these other Division One, Two, and Three schools and JUCO as well. We can pick up. I always say to the kids, "Hey, what do you, if there's someone you're interested in, let us know. We'll invite them. If you need us to send your numbers to somebody that wasn't here today, if we ran a sixty or did an arm velo or a pop times or you pitched on the mound and you want us to let that team know, we'll we will do that. I think that's a separator where this isn't just come to the Northeastern camp and be seen by us. And if we don't think you're a good fit, that's the end of it. You know, I mean, again, realistically, most of the kids aren't going to end up at Northeastern, but can we, can we help you along the way? Can you come see our campus at least and say, Hey, I didn't like that kind of campus. I want to go somewhere else. Well, you're still helping yourself with that process. So um, I do think it's a close group here in new England. And I do think we try to help each other to an extent. (laughs) We always (laughs) want to keep our players. Let's not, let's not go that far, but I definitely think we're, we're trying to help the student athlete get placed in the best spot he can go. Well, Mike, I want to say thank you for taking the time finally uh, to join us. And I'm really looking forward. I go down and watch a few games every year. Uh, I love this, the facility. It's located in Brookline, Massachusetts, yep. uh, for those of you that are asking. Uh, but take some time, learn a little bit about Northeastern University. Look into the background. We haven't really touched on it, but we're talking to uh, I think you were coach of the year in the CAA four times, New England coach of the year a couple times. Tremendous coaching staff at Northeastern University. Uh, and that's a testament to a true baseball man, which is what Mike is. Mike, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time. Coach Serrano said to say hello. He's coaching today uh, at Johnson. He wanted to make sure I, I send you a, a hello. But anything that you would like to learn about Northeastern University, Coach Glavin's program, Leave your questions or comments. Send uh, along a direct message if need be. I will be putting all of his contact information into the content of the vi- of the video so that you can reach him directly at Northeastern. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time, Captain. 
Thanks, Walter. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad we could finally do it and keep up. Oh, uh, you big league me for a long that's time, not, Captain. But that's, that's not personal. It's just me. <laughs> just business. All right, bud. Thanks, All right, buddy. Thanks.